Sporting now, South African police have confirmed that the former cricketer Peter Roebuck had been accused of sexually assaulting a young Zimbabwean man before he committed suicide at the weekend. Roebuck, who was born in Britain but lived in Australia and South Africa since his retirement from the game, was in Cape Town covering cricket as a journalist. He's understood to have jumped to his death from a hotel window after being questioned by police. Our sports reporter, Kamian Zerum, has this. Peter Roebuck, in his prime, a talented cricketer. When he hung up his bat, a renowned cricket writer, and now a victim of suicide. On Saturday night, Peter Roebuck leapt to his death from a sixth floor Cape Town hotel room. He'd just been visited by the police. They wanted to arrest him for an alleged sexual assault on a 26-year-old Zimbabwean man that Roebuck had befriended on Facebook. He told the police he needed to change his clothes, but when they got to his room, he jumped. Absolutely stunned and shocked um, um, that this had happened. Back in the 80s, Vic Marks used to play first-class cricket with Roebuck for Somerset. Roebuck had been his best man, but even he never really knew him. He was a brilliant writer uh, and could be brilliant company, but um, he wouldn't let you in. He'd talk forever about cricket or politics, or, uh, but he wouldn't talk about himself uh, and he would bottle things up. Part blamed for the sacking of two of Somerset's finest ever, Sir Viv Richards and Joel Garner, Roebuck's playing career had ended in acrimony. A furious Ian Botham left soon after. I think it's very important that uh, he and I hammer out our differences uh, and then we see where that goes from there. Mistrusted by many in the sport, all along Roebuck was hiding demons. They became horribly public when he was convicted of common assault in 2001. Roebuck had taken to sponsoring promising young overseas cricketers, inviting them to his home near Taunton. But when he caned three of them across their buttocks, they took him to court. One of them's reported to have said, the problem wasn't so much that he caned us, but wanted to examine the marks. That's when I decided to get out of his house. Roebuck eventually left the UK for South Africa and a lucrative career as a commentator, where once again he began training promising young cricketers. But by then, it was clear he was troubled. He worried you a little because there was an evident dark side to him, dare I say. Um, he would laugh and he would joke and then he'd look all serious and you wondered how many personality strands were within that, that body. Roebuck contributed the foreword to David Frith's book about the high number of cricketers who take their own lives. It was an eerie, if defiant, premonition. Some people have predicted a gloomy end for this writer. One former colleague said so to my face in September 1986. It will not be so.